Hi, I'm Quentin Siegfried, and uh, you know, normally my videos have a little bit of humor in them. I show some exercise or I show an event. I think this is an event that we have to show. We have to get more people involved and understand what these ladies are going through. It's for Unifor Local 229. They've been on strike for, I would say, over three months now. And pretty soon they'll be going on 100 days. And the doctors won't negotiate with them. They won't work with them to try and make a deal. And so I'm here to help support these ladies, and I think everyone is, from the national president, Jerry Diaz, to everyone involved. Don't get prescription drugs is an absolute embarrassment. They should be ashamed of themselves. Shame. Shame. So you've got doctors that have been working side by side, 65 women. You want to talk about misogyny. Male doctors, 65 female employees, no respect. They went, if you can imagine, 10 years without a wage increase. The doctors, if you can imagine, took away their WSIB protection. Ooh, Who does doctor. that in the health field? So this is our way of saying to the doctors, please do the right thing. We want you to come to the bargaining table. They don't care. This has to be settled. Take a look at the patients. Deserve so much better. They have kids working here, if you can imagine. Confidential medical files all over the place. And you've got teenagers working here. What type of a doctor would have their kid act as a scab over the summer? Shame on the scab! Shame! Shame. Shame. So anyway, this is about highlighting the issue. This is about the fact that we have members that are working full-time hours, but are treated as casual workers so that the employer doesn't have to pay benefits. Remember who the employers are. They're the millionaires. They're the doctors that are making so much. And they're the doctors that are so brief. So we need to find a solution here. They took an oath, do no harm. Do no okay folks, again, uh, some beautiful weather, a wonderful turnout at another rally in front of the Port Arthur Health Center. I, uh, I look forward to the day when this is over and we don't have to have rallies in front of the Port Arthur Health Center, but until those doctors uh, can table a fair offer that these workers can uh, can accept as a tentative settlement and, and ratify, then we'll be here as long as it takes to make sure that we win justice for our workers here, the 65 brave women at the Port Arthur Health Center. So again, thank you for your support. I'm just going to uh, say thank you to a, a few of the other unions that have, have supported us through this whole thing and are here today. OPSU and Alaska, the Catholic School Board. Uh, and uh, also a, uh, an awesome group of social activists that, that are called Stand Up For Change who saw the strike video uh, and, and were empowered by it and decided to form as a coalition to stand up and stand with us in support of these uh, 65 brave women. So Stand Up For Change, thank you so much. To win a strike like this, it takes a community and there's no better community to do it in than the city of Thunder Bay. If I could uh, also recognize our newly elected MPP, Judith Monteith Farrell. Judith, thank you, because you didn't just show up today for a rally, but, but you've been out here all along uh, supporting these workers and if we keep elected people like you, then we'll get things like anti-scab legislation and rights for workers that will make these uh, these type of disputes and situations uh, turn on the on the benefits of the workers. I also just want to recognize, um, sorry, uh, councillor and mayoral candidate, councillor at large, Ian Angus. Um, uh, councillor for McKellar Ward, Paul Pugh.
And also Frank Puglia, who's a counselor at large also, who showed up today. Thank you uh, for your support, and we need you know you to keep uh, advocating on behalf of these women, all, all the politicians of all different stripes. But you've been out here supporting us, and again, thank you very much. So, if we could start by having the uh, our unit chair, the uh, the person who really runs this whole show, <laughs> and if you uh, saw the, uh, the the strike video that we made, you'll know why her new nickname is uh, 1471. That's what we call her. I'm not used to public speaking, so you'll have to forgive me here, so, yeah. I, I just want to thank everybody for, for coming out, and, and Jerry for coming out for as, a, as the National President here for the Union, and, and just in support of all the women here that are on strike for fair wages, uh, better working conditions, and, you know, let's, let's give a hand to all these women. For, for the conditions that we are that we want right now with regards to eradication, but this is also for the future of the workers behind us. So you know they're they're putting their 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 um, integrity on the line just in order to support all women in, in the future now and in the future. But uh, I'd certainly like to thank everybody for attending it and. Um, Please keep up the public support because, I mean, it really helps with the morale. And just so that you're aware, July 17th, which is next Tuesday, would actually be 100 days on strike. You know, shame, shame, shame. So they need to come back to the table. We don't want to hit that 100-day mark, do we? So let's just hope they come back to the table. And thanks again, everyone. And uh, no stranger to Thunder Bay, uh, assistant to Jerry Dyes, Katha Forte. Thank you. Good to come home. Good to come home to a good trade union city where people stand up for women and workers. I'm very proud of you all. And you know, Lori, Lori says she's not good at public speaking. Damn it, she's a movie star now. Gee, 106,000 views on that video and she rocked it. And, and so did the other sisters that were in the video. You know, I tell you, I worked in healthcare, worked in a hospital, and some of my friends from the hospital are here from Nipigon. And, uh, you know, there, there's a bit of misogyny that goes on in that type of workplace where the doctors are mainly men and they hold all the power. And we fought that in the hospitals because we fought it with unions and we fought for respect. But those who have been nurses for a long time and working in healthcare for a long time will remember those days. Well, you know what, sisters and brothers and friends, the days of misogyny are alive and well in this damn clinic, and that's a damn shame. You know, those doctors made an oath to do no harm. Do no harm, that's what they said. But you know what, to the women that work for them, if they could pay them less, they would. If they could pay them less, they would. 65 women, 50 of whom do not have benefits, seriously, work casual for year after year after year. Again, we're not talking about huge increases. We're, ta we're not even talking about making a great living. Just passable wages. Just come to the table and bargain with us. That's all we ask. So let's hear it. Let's let the doctors hear us today. Make some noise. Tell them, come on out and bargain. It's time. Thank you, sisters and brothers. Oh, okay. Well, this is a classic example of the needy and the greedy. This is an example of those that work so hard each and every day that just aren't rewarded financially, nor are they respected for the incredible work that they do. So today is about exposing the hypocrisy of all of them. I have to admit, I wanted to go for a little walk because we talked about the scabs. We talked about the absolute sheer gall of people crossing a picket line, taking jobs from workers that are making $14.71 an hour. So, Lori, I think we've all adopted that now because it's a rallying cry, but it's shameful. Sister is working behind me for over 30 years. Over 30 years. 
who ended up as minimum wage increases get pay increases. Working for multi-millionaires. You know, I was listening last night, they were talking to me about Dr. Allison, who was around during the strike in the mid-70s. A person who's been a doctor, I would expect, for a good 40 years anyway. The only person with more money than him is the Queen. And we met her inside, apparently, because when I asked her what her name was, she said the Queen. <laughs> but it's just disgusting, the lack of respect. And Kath nailed it. It's about misogyny at its finest. It's about men with power and money with no regard for those that have created the wealth. And what we need is we need to have a conversation. We need to have a conversation immediately with the Minister of Health. How is it that we can have untrained people, teenagers, working with confidential medical files? Sending them to the wrong people! How do we have scabs, no training, no principles, no decency, are going to be booking medical procedures? Sterilizing equipment? You would think that if we're going to run a health clinic, that would be based on professionalism. It would be based on respect for those patients that have entrusted them so much. So sisters and brothers, we're dealing in a society where it's about more for so few. I can't imagine a situation where we have sisters that are working full-time hours that are still being treated as casuals. Why? To, divide the, to deny them basic health care benefits and so that they can pay them less. Shame. Working for the medical profession without basic health care benefits. Wow. What a shame. 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 So I said to the media, and I'm dead serious, we have 6,000 uniform members in Thunder Bay. We have 315,000 members across the country. And I think there's only one way to bring this to a head. It's that we're going to have to bring our 6,000 members to this picket line. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have to say enough is enough. The only way we can win this is through our solidarity. Because it's clearly very difficult to shame people that have no pride. No honor. They have no honor. So sisters, we're here with you, and we're going to be here with you until we bring these negotiations to a successful conclusion. I see, I see a lot of the Opsu shirts out there, and I want to thank you so much, my good friend Smokey Thomas. I know we're going through the same fight right now on Owen Sound. But this is a classic example of what happens when you have a for-profit healthcare system. It's about greed. It's not about people. My friends at Oecta, I met a friend from the Steelworkers. Of course, we have Paul and the other politicians here today. But more importantly, the last message is to the sisters. You're a courageous, courageous group and you make our entire union so proud so let's stick together let's get it done thank you very much for allowing me the honor of being here today